Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Deep Penetration Podcast. Yes, you heard it right. It is called Deep Penetration, and there is a reason for that that I will explain. But before I do, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Danny, and I am a self-esteem and love coach uh, that focuses on the LGBTQ plus community. Um, I myself identify as bisexual, and you know, I wanted to I wanted to create a place, a resource. Um, obviously just a podcast in general where we can talk about everything and anything um, surface level and deeper. Hence the name Deep Penetration. What are the two reasons? One, it's funny and I love a great pun. And two, uh, because I want to get deeper with topics, right? I want to talk about the the root of things and and why things are the way that they are and maybe just try to explore the reasons in and of themselves. That being said, there will be a range of topics that are covered on this podcast from dating to navigating love to understanding self, um, relationship with shame and all these different topics. So some things will be very surface and other things will go much deeper. Um, I hope that you guys find this podcast to be informative and helpful and, you know, just another tool, another resource for us so that we can navigate this crazy thing called life and love and self. So what did I want to talk about today? Essentially, um, this is going to be about dating and really it's just the three ways to tell that like that he's not looking for a serious relationship. Um, so often I feel like a lot of people don't don't know um, how to spot the red flags. And even if we do, oftentimes we ignore it. So if this is you, if this is something that you can relate to, I completely empathize. I have been there before. I've experienced that before. And a lot of the things that I talk on this podcast has to do with my experience as a life and a relationship coach, the hundreds and hundreds of people that I have worked with over the years, and my own personal experience in this field. Um, so what are the three ways to tell that he just is is not looking for a serious relationship. And I think the biggest one for me is inconsistency. So I I don't know if you have, but I have definitely been there before where I have, I've matched with somebody, um, we've connected, we are off to a great start. There's great communication, there's back and forth, there's banter, there's jokes, there's flirtation. And then they disappear. Um, or they're just not as um, communicative, right? The messages are taking longer and longer to be replied to. Um, you know, we've gone on a date or two or three dates, and then it's kind of like, oh, they're too busy to go on a date. And then two weeks later, they're wanting to go on a date again, or two or three weeks later, they're picking up conversation again and pretending like nothing happened. You know, that inconsistency is a huge red flag for me, um, especially when you feel like you are putting in a majority of the effort. I remember specifically one time um, I was going on dates with this one guy, I will not give his name just for the purposes of confidentiality, but um, this was in Los Angeles. And it seemed like we hit it off pretty well. We had a lot in common. Um, we did a couple of hikes and, you know, went to a couple of dinners. He invited me over to his house. I met his roommate and some of his friends. And, you know, it it felt good. Um, but there was just something that I felt was a little bit off. Um, there were little clues and and hints of maybe not necessarily being as emotionally available as they would like to, even though they wanted to try and they wanted a serious relationship. But for me, I was like, okay, I'm pretty good at being able to navigate these types of situations. So I'm going to give this individual a shot. And essentially what ended up happening was that I ended up being the person who was communicating a lot. I ended up being the person who was making a lot of the plans. And it got to a point where I would send a message, I would check in, and I wouldn't hear from this individual for hours on end or even not until like the next day or two days later. So 
what did I do? I sent him a message and I essentially just let him know. And I said, hey, look, um, <clears throat> I... I would like the opportunity to meet up in person just to have a quick chat. We did, and I let this person know, and I said, hey, look, I'm just letting you know, I appreciate the fact, I appreciate where you're at right now in life. There is no pressure on my end. However, I do feel like I'm putting in a lot more of the effort than you are, and because of that, I'm gonna have to pull back because you know I respect my time, um, and I know what I have to offer, and I know what I bring to the table, and it's evident to me that you're just not able to see that in this moment. That's totally fine, not a problem, but it's just, I'm not I'm not down for this dynamic and this interaction. And he was very receptive and very understanding and he was apologetic. And, you know, we kind of just went our separate ways at that point and we didn't talk again. But I say all of that to say that if there is an inconsistency in their behavior, in the way in which they are communicating, then that is a huge red flag. And it's a big indication that he is not um honestly ready to to commit in any way. Um the second thing that I look for is is future planning, right? Now, let me get this. I was going to say, let me get this straight, but I feel like with this podcast, it probably would not be the appropriate thing to say. But um, <laughs> let's let's talk about the the reasons why future planning is so important. And I think when somebody starts to plan for the future, it shows that they are envisioning you in their life long term, not just short term. But there are some red flags that you should be on the lookout for. If this individual is future planning like right off the bat, red flag. Um, relationships and and connection and compatibility takes a little bit of time to to grow, to get to that place where it feels like, okay, this is something that I can commit to and that feels secure and feels safe and feels comfortable. So if somebody is already like day one, like second date saying, you know, oh, we should go to Puerto Rico next month, or, you know, I would love to be able to, you know, take you here because I totally see us being, you know, in a relation, like any of that, that future talk that's very like commitment oriented towards the very, very beginning. It's not that it's like the worst thing in the world, but I would, I would be very vigilant of that, right? That almost feels a little too anxious for me. And if you're unfamiliar with attachment styles, that feels like an indication of somebody who has a bit of an anxious attachment style um, and is wanting to lock something down super quick. Now, as things develop um, and as you get to know this person, let's say you go on a few dates or maybe you guys have been seeing each other for a few months and there still really isn't any conversation about the future, it's something that I would be observant of and aware of. Maybe you bring up some things and say, you know, what are your future plans? You know, what do you envision, um, you know, for us maybe a month or two down the line? Granted, if this if this is you guys and you guys have been dating for, let's say, you know, three to six months, I would say maybe even five to six months, three might still be a little bit um, new. And if this individual still does not have an answer for you and still does not provide you with any indication that they are are looking to the future, then it's something that I would be consciously aware of and I would consider a red flag. Um, and the other one, which kind of piggybacks off of the first one, is lack of communication, right? Just not really talking, not texting, not taking the the time or the effort to check in on you, see how you're doing, um, get to know you as a person, ask what your hobbies are, what your future goals are, um, maybe even just your general history, information about your family, Anything that shows that this person has an interest in you. Um, I've been guilty of maybe not being as um, communicative with some people when I was dating. And when I really look back on those situations and I reflect on where I was at mentally and emotionally, it's not that I wasn't attracted to that person and it's not that I didn't, you know, think in my head like, oh, I wonder if this can go somewhere. I just wasn't ready. Um, I was either emotionally unavailable or I was or coming off of a bad experience with somebody that I was dating um, or I was just generally stressed out from just life stuff, right? So it's important that we allow ourselves to be self-reflective and present and, and acknowledge our part in the dynamic as 
well. So if you're able to do that for yourself, it's much easier for you to to clock that in other people. So again, the three major red flags um, that usually are an indication to me that this person is not looking for a serious relationship is one, lack of consistency, um, two, a lack of future planning, and three, lack of communication. Um, If you are watching this and you are currently going through this, or if you're listening to this and you're currently going through this, it's important that you ask yourself. So let's say, for example, you've been in this dynamic for for a little bit, or you're you're finding that this is a repeat pattern in your life. It's important that you ask yourself the question, why you accept this behavior in your life, right? Why do I accept it? What what about this situation is is fulfilling? What about this situation is making me feel good? What about this situation is aligned with what my future goals are and what I am looking for in a partner and in a relationship? And if the answer comes back as nothing, right? Or the answer comes back as, well, he's a really good person and he's really nice. And the times that we have hung out together, they have been great that's still not enough substance and not enough of a foundation to be able to build a healthy relationship on. You know, the key facets to a healthy relationship are communication, consistency, and trust. Those are the three. So if there is a part of you that is not trusting this dynamic, is there is a part of you that feels like there is a major lack of communication, if there is a part of you that knows there is a lack of consistency in the dynamic of this situationship, relationship, whatever it is you want to call it, then you have to be real with yourself and you have to take a step back and you have to say, if I continue to accept this in my life, I will continue this pattern indefinitely in perpetuity. And that is not something that you want to take control of your dating life, control of yourself, take the reins and put forth intentional effort of looking for individuals who are like-minded and aligned and have the same core values as you do and are looking for the same things. Don't settle. You don't need to settle. You deserve better. You deserve more. And once you actually start to believe that, those types of individuals will start to come around. Trust me, it has happened for many of the people that I have worked with and had also it has also happened for my Self. And that is why a lot of what I talk about is about self-esteem, right? And our relationship with with shame and and how we view ourselves and and that negative self-perception that a lot of us have that fuel us to want to aesthetically look better, dress better, have the better job, and all of those things. And all of that is great. That's all positive. But we also have to ensure that at the foundation of that are positive core feelings and that we are acting intentionally and accepting ourselves um, throughout the process of growing and dating and, and all of those things. So again, the three is just super quick, lack of consistency, um, lack of future planning, and lack of communication. I hope you found this episode to be helpful and informative, and I hope that you guys um, are connecting, honestly, to to the message and the stories and, and the topics that I am talking about. Please feel free to leave a comment and let me know your own personal experiences, what you think, if you have any questions whatsoever. Um, That is why we have multiple different platforms, right? We have this podcast and the YouTube and a website. So if you feel like you need help, if you feel like you need support, if you just feel like you want somebody to talk to about your current situation, I am more than happy to support you through that process or honestly whatever it is you are currently going through like i said i created this for 
all of us to have a resource and to be able to have these open and candid conversations and provide resources and recommendations and tools um, based on my personal experience as a life and relationship coach. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And again, if you guys enjoyed the episode and you enjoyed this podcast, please make sure you subscribe so that you are supporting the podcast. I will see you guys in the next episode.